When we talk about particles and how they behave, we first have to imagine what particles are. Particles are merely substances. And uh, in reality, substances take on a variety of shapes. Uh, it all depends on how these, what these substances are made of and um, what the electron orbitals look like when uh, these substances are made, all right? But when we talk about the description or excuse, explain how these substances behave, we like to simplify it a little bit and imagine that all these substances are perfect round spheres, all right? Or beads. Now, when we say that all these substances are these perfect round spheres, we can use and apply kinetic theory. Now, uh, kinetic theory basically explains the behavior of these particles or these round spheres uh, in their solids, liquids, and gaseous states. While we can kind of already talked about what, how it behaves in the solids and liquid states, it is quite interesting when we try to explain the behavior of these particles in the gas form or gaseous state. Now, uh, it is hard to deviate away from talking about gas pressure, Brownian motion, and diffusion when we talk about the behavior of these particles uh, in this gaseous state using kinetic theory. So, that's what we're going to do. This, today we're going to talk about gas pressure. Now, gas pressure, uh, what is that? Well, gas pressure is merely an accumulation of all these tiny forces of these gas particles when it hits the wall of the container. Now, uh, the behavior of gas particles uh, are that we know that it's random, random speed, and in random direction. So that means they're moving all over the place at random speeds and random direction, all right? And they're far apart, we know that. When the gas particles move around, it will either collide with itself or collide with the wall of the container. Now when it hits the wall of the container, it exerts a tiny force on the wall of the container, just like that. An accumulation of all these tiny forces is what we call gas pressure. So, gas, that is gas pressure. But we cannot really isolate gas pressure on its own. The concept of gas pressure is very interrelated to two other properties, which are volume and temperature, all right, or variables. All right, let's talk about the relationship between pressure and volume. When, let's say we have this container, and we have a movable um, top cover, all right? We can move the top cover up and down. At this volume of space, um, the gas particles are moving at random speeds. Some are fast, some are uh, slow, all right? And they're moving in all kinds of direction. All right? And they're moving in all kinds of different directions. And when it hits the wall of the container, it exerts gas pressure. But when we close this movable lid, when we clamp down this movable lid to, let's say, down here, all right, the space that, and this time, and distance it, for the gas particles to hit the wall, Right? And they're moving in random directions, again, at random speeds. But the distance and time it takes for these gas particles to hit the wall of the container is dramatically reduced when we reduce the volume of this container. And that means it takes less time for these particles to hit the wall of the container. And it gives the appearance too, when you do a simulation online, it gives the appearance that the particles are moving at a much faster rate, right? Because we've got lots of it moving around. And so uh, what we're saying here is, when you have a bigger volume, 
it takes more time for the particles to hit the wall of the container to exert gas pressure. When you reduce the volume of the container, it takes less time for the gas particles to hit the wall of the container, and therefore the pressure should increase. That's why we can say that pressure and volume has an inverse, have an inverse relationship. And that means when you have a high pressure and when you have a low volume, you get a high pressure. Or when you have a high pressure, you should have a low volume. Right? And also when you have a bigger volume, the pressure is lower. And when you have a or when you have a low pressure, that means you will have a higher volume. So these relationship is inversely related. Let's talk about pressure and temperature. At this, the bo two boxes now are the same size. And at a particular low temperature, uh, the, can, the speed of the particles uh, are almost the same, right? But remember, it's still random and motion and random direction. Okay, but uh, the average speed of the particles or the average rate of these particles traveling and hitting the wall of the container is, well, relatively low. So it has a low pressure compared to when we raise the temperature. So let's raise the temperature by putting this container under a stove, right? Or, or on top of the stove. And when you apply heat to the container, uh, you, give the, you provide more energy to the container. The energy is now absorbed into the particles, and the particles now on average are moving at a much higher rate, right? So they're moving in random directions at a much higher rate. And when it's moving at a much higher rate, the time it takes for it to hit the wall of the container now has decreased dramatically. And therefore, uh, when you take a specific period of time, there are more collisions, there are more uh, particle to wall collisions than previously, all right? So therefore, the pressure has increased as well. So what we can say about the relationship between pressure and temperature is that it has a direct relationship. That means when you increase the pressure, temperature, the pressure should also increase because there's more kinetic energy for the particles and the time it takes for the particles to hit the wall of the container has been reduced. And also, uh, if you increase the pressure, you should also uh, experience an increase in the temperature of the container. So uh, the relationship between pressure and temperature is a direct one.